On a recent trip to Philadelphia, I stayed at the Independent Hotel and was treated to a wonderful tour from Andy at Awfully Nice Tours. This is the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, which was opened in 1926. It was the longest single span bridge in the world. And this is the Delaware River, and you're looking at New Jersey. This is one of the oldest cities in America, and we wanted to understand its history, so we started at Carpenter's Hall. In 1773, you have the Boston Tea Party, and then in 1774, the colonies decided to meet here to discuss their grievances with King George III. This was the first Continental Congress here in Carpenter's Hall. And really, they're not talking about independence, they're just talking about the fact that they want to send a letter to the king to express their grievances. Then we stopped at the church that George Washington used to attend. This was put here during a period of enlightenment. The idea was that they wanted God to see through the windows into the church. They wanted to see out, to see God in the, they wanted to see the sky. They wanted to see the trees around it. Just above the window here is a head of King George II because he was the king when this church was first put here. They started building this in 1727. The spire was finished in 1754. The chandelier you're seeing there is an original chandelier and would have been the chandelier that Ben Franklin's daughter, Sarah, walked under when she got married. There are seven of the signers of the Declaration of Independence buried either in the church grounds or in the burial ground, which is about a block and a half away from here. Next up, a stop at Ben Franklin's favorite bar. Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Ben Franklin, George Washington came here to have a beer and talk about the issues of the day and politics and science and any other topic. But especially during the revolution, this would have been a very important meeting place. Of course, we had to see the very famous Liberty Bell, but the line was rather long, so we just ended up peeking through the window. And there it is. Then we're off to Elfris Alley, which is the oldest street in Philadelphia, and people still live in these homes today. This house would have been probably built in the 1720s. It is about 12 foot wide, 20 to 25 feet deep. The basement is probably a kitchen here, uh, although it would have been just storage before. The ground floor is um, you know, a lounge, then there's bathroom and bedroom, Sec the second floor and the third floor is probably just a bedroom. Throughout Philadelphia are examples of beautiful architecture, and you can definitely see the Greek influence. This is an old penitentiary, one of the oldest in the nations. And there are statues everywhere, statues from people from the Revolutionary War and even modern day. The mural program started as an anti-graffiti movement and now includes 3,000 murals throughout the city. Philadelphia is known as the city of brotherly love, and that was evident when we were there. There were weddings all over the place. And of course, Philadelphia is filled with fine restaurants and the famous Philadelphia cheesesteaks that are definitely worth standing in line for. This is the signature restaurant of Stephen Starr, who owns about 14 restaurants in the city. The Comcast building definitely took our breath away with the largest video screen ever. And of course, you have to visit the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the famous steps that Rocky ran up. There's a lot to see and do in Philadelphia. You'll have a great time.